Greetings and welcome to the second part of Should You Spay the Japanese Navy. In this video we'll be looking at the Japanese frigates and evaluating if they're worth spading or not. I'll get this out of the way first, but frigates are generally difficult to spade. They sit at the BR of destroyers, spawn of destroyers, get game modes designed for destroyers, but they are certainly not destroyers. The frigates generally are outgunned, outran and less survivable than destroyers, not to mention their high research, purchase and repair costs which leads to them just not being able to fully reach their potential as vehicles in the meta. These factors weighed heavily when determining their verdict. I'll now go on to the reviews, let's begin. First, we'll look at the Chikago. This will probably be the first trick you'll get, since it is the cheapest. Let's see what you can expect of it. Armed with a twin 76mm turret, a twin 40mm bofors mount, and six rather pathetic torpedoes and two triple launchers, one on each side. The 76mm guns get a choice of high explosive, armor piercing high explosive, and high explosive variable time fuse. High explosive is your main anti shipping shell, yes, even against destroyers. Armor piercing is for tougher targets like Russian gunboats and later destroyers that are more resistant to high explosive. High explosive variable time fuse is for when you want to deal with aerial threats personally. The twin 40s at the rear can provide you with some basic anti air cover and can serve as a PT boat deterrent, but are not effective enough to rely on 100% of the time. This armament, while looking weak for 3.7, is actually pretty decent because of the high velocity and fire rate of the 76s. The 40mm, being bofors, are good backups at close range and while the torpedoes have very low explosive mass, their range and speed are decent enough and no matter the explosive mass, they'll still cause flooding. And let's not forget to mention that Chikago also gets radar, which really improves your chances at sniping aircraft from long range with your main guns using HEVT. There is also an ASROC launcher in the middle of the ship which currently has no function, but if I didn't misunderstand, this system basically launches a two-stage weapon, with the first stage being a rocket, which is used to deploy the second stage, a torpedo, at long range. This is an anti-submarine weapon system, so the torpedoes don't have an extremely high explosive mass, which from what I could find and have been told is around 108 kilos of TNT. I don't know if this will ever be functional in game, but it's something to keep in mind. The mobility of the Chikago is still decent enough where you can get to the objectives, which will usually be late to the party with your top speed of 46 km an hour spaded. You also need to be aware of the sonar bolts on the front of your ship, which can get stuck in shallower waters. The survivability is decent against patrol boats armed with water cannons, but poor against anything bigger than 76mm. You can, however, usually survive long enough to cripple or destroy the enemy that is killing you. One very noticeable flaw in the survivability of the Chikago, however, and also a flaw with its armament, is the turret at the front. This main gun turret is unarmored and very large, taking up most of your profile when you face the enemy head-on. This will lead to many frustrations when you're stuck, paired with the fact that knocking out main gun turrets also has a high chance of setting fires. It is not unlikely for you to take one hit which knocks out your main guns and starts a fire which will slowly kill you. Once you get parts and FPE however, this problem becomes lesser but your main guns will still get knocked out frequently. For playstyle, I suggest being rather conservative, hugging islands close to capture points or other choke points and letting the enemies push out in front of your guns, your firepower being good enough to deal significant damage while the enemy is caught off guard and getting their guns on targets. Be aware of your surroundings however, as sneaky PT boats could get behind you, knock out your 40s and keep behind you out of sight of your main guns, and kill you slowly. This has happened to me more than once. Your radar also makes you a very good AA support vessel, which can be quite valuable to your teammates. Pros. Decent firepower, decent survivability, has radar. Cons, weak torpedoes, vulnerable turret. Verdict, consider it. The Chikago is a strong vessel, your firepower being strong enough to go toe to toe with destroyers at ranges of 5 km and below, but your vulnerable turret is probably the biggest flaw which can quickly turn the tables in a fight. The condition of naval currently, however, will make it face up tiers often, and in these up tiers it will face vehicles that fastly outclass it. In a down tier, however, the Chikago should be a perfectly enjoyable vessel, as long as you don't forget about the enemy 3.7s. Next up, the Ikazuchi, carrying the same armament as the Chikago, minus the torpedoes, and also sitting at 3.7. Let us look at what makes this vessel different. The Ikazuchi still has the same dual 40mm Bofors mount as on the Chikago, now mounted closer to the middle of the ship. The major difference lies in the 76mm rapid fire guns. Instead of both being placed in the big turret at the front, the Ikazuchi carries them in two single mounts, one in the front and one in the rear of the vessel. Because the guns are not being housed in a big turret, and the fact that they're split into two mounts, it is much more difficult to knock them out than it would be on a Chikago, making your firepower much more reliable. Much like the Chikago, the Ikazuchi gets a radar which is useful for tracking air targets, 
but the lock-on range is reduced to 5 km compared to Tachiko Gul's 10 km. Mobility and survivability-wise, the Ikazuchi is very similar to the Chikugo, only being 2 km an hour faster and having very similar survivability. For playstyle, I suggest you use the Ikazuchi a bit more aggressively than you'd use the Chikugo, heading away from destroyers and closer to the PT boat combat area, where you can lead the charge and fight up enemies at close range. Be aware of your surroundings, as a potent PT boat could flank you and do serious harm if you don't react quick enough. If you can't avoid combat with destroyers, then use as much cover as possible and keep in mind that most destroyers outrange you. But your damage output is similar to that of early destroyers if you can get within your effective range, which I put at around 5km for these 76mm guns. Pros. Good firepower. Good survivability. Has radar. Cons. No torpedoes. Verdict. Consider it. The Ikazuchi is pretty much a better Chikugo in the current state of naval and is much more enjoyable to play thanks to it not having the same turret weakness the Chikugo has. Out of all Japanese frigates, the Ikazuchi comes closest to earning the spaded verdict, but due to the current treatment of frigates, I cannot give it this verdict. Next, a very different vessel, the Shonan. Still at 3.7, the Shonan gets a very different armament from the two earlier frigates, this being two 120mm guns, split into two single mounts, one at the front and one at the rear. For its anti-air weaponry, it gets 16 25mm autocannons. This armament is decent enough for a frigate of that BR. The 120mm are different than the ones you see on other vessels with this caliber main armament, having a manageable spread, reload and traverse rate, although still a bit slow. These mounts can also rotate a full 360 degrees, which comes in handy if you quickly want to get your guns on target. The 120 spec a punch and get a high explosive time fuse shell, but I wouldn't really take these since the 25mm are usually sufficient enough to deal with aerial threats. One problem with the Shonan's 120 mils is that they don't carry any kind of armor-piercing rounds, which means you have no reliable option to deal with heavily armored targets. The survivability of the Shonan is mixed, being able to reliably withstand autocannon fire without taking too much damage, but when you face an opponent with decent amount of penetration on their shells, these can go straight into your massive ammo racks with predictable results. Now for its biggest negative, the mobility. The Shonan has the top speed of 36 km an hour, spaded. This paired with the fact that you spawn with destroyers, which in some cases are twice as fast as you, just removes any chance of you being actually useful to the team. In down tiers it might not be as bad, because of the close proximity of destroyer spawns to the capture points, but in full up tiers it's just a joke. As an example, in one battle it took me 14 minutes to get from my spawn to the closest capture point, while sailing in a straight line, with no interruptions. By the time you get there, either the battle is already over, or you get intercepted by a much faster, and much more capable adversary. For playstyle, if you manage to get close enough to the battle to actually have an option, I suggest using the Shonan as a somewhat mobile artillery platform, using decent 120s at range, engaging distracted targets or sneaky PT boats that haven't noticed you. If you get flanked, use the 25s as they're positioned quite well around the ship and give you ample firepower at most angles. I recommend you don't sit still however, as the 25s don't have enough range to adequately protect against high altitude bombers. Rose, good firepower, decent survivability, decent anti-air. Cons, poor mobility, vulnerable ammo storage. Verdict, skip it. The really low top speed paired with the destroyer spawn removes any potential this otherwise interesting ship has at performing well. While this might not be your experience all the time, as some maps, especially in down tiers, have better spawn locations for the Shonan, this will be too inconsistent to reliably have good matches. The last 3.7 Japanese frigate for now is the Chidori. Similarly armed to the Shonan but being very different in execution, let's see how the Chidori performs. Still carrying two 120mm guns, but different ones from the Shonan, they have a slow reload and traverse rate, but do have the option to carry a semi armor piercing shell, giving you a counter to heavily armored targets. The mounts for these 120mm also can't rotate a full 360 degrees, which can lead to sticky situations when a target pops up on the other side of your ship. These guns don't really have the accuracy to engage at very long ranges, meaning that the Chidori has roughly the same effective fighting range of 5 km, much like the preceding frigates. The Chidori gets a lesser amount of 25mm guns at 10, but these should still sufficiently protect you from aerial threats. The Chidori also gets two torpedoes which are decent enough for a frigate, but are only really useful as melee weapons against some sort of cruiser, because you can't fire a wide enough spread to hit anything at range. The explosive mass of these torpedoes is rather low, however, which can mean you won't one-shot enemy destroyers or cruisers. 
Survivability-wise, the Chidori is similar to other frigates, but perhaps a bit more susceptible to taking damage from smaller autocannons. The mobility of the Chidori is quite high in comparison to all other frigates in the Japanese tech tree, coming in at 52 km an hour speeded. While still slower than most destroyers, it's a much more acceptable top speed, giving you more opportunities to position yourself however you want. For playstyle, I suggest using the Chidori to try and get into flanking positions, as you don't have the firepower and survivability to directly fight destroyers, but your relatively good top speed gives you an option on how to approach targets. Try to get as close as possible so all your weaponry have a high chance of hitting, as the main guns have rather poor accuracy, and in some cases it's even recommended to use AP bullets on your 25 mils to deal with enemies. As mentioned earlier, use your torpedoes as melee weapons to deal with distracted cruisers and destroyers. Pros Good top speed, decent anti-air, decent torpedoes, cons, mediocre survivability, unreliable firepower. Verdict? Skip it. While on paper the Chidori seems like a perfectly capable ship, it is here where you can most clearly see the problem of how frigates are treated as destroyers. The main armament on the Chidori is two mounts of the exact same 120mm guns found on the reserve destroyer Matsuki. This destroyer has a lower battle rating than the Chidori, even though it is faster, more survivable, has more and better torpedoes, and more main gun firepower. The only thing the Chidori is better for than the Mutsuki is anti-air. But this should not be a reason for the Chidori to have a higher battle rating than the Mutsuki. And not to forget that the Mutsuki is a free reserve, while the Chidori is an end-of-the-line vehicle with its research and modification costs. Because of this ship effectively being a worse Mutsuki at a higher BR, it makes it not worthwhile spading. Now for the last, and only for Pado frigate, the Isuzu. This vessel is the current peak of the coastal fleet, let's see if it can live up to the title. Armed with two dual 76mm turrets, the same ones seen on the Chikago at the beginning of the video, and paired with a radar system similar to the Ikazuchi. The Isuzu carries no secondary guns, but does have a rather interesting gimmick with the anti-submarine rocket launcher. This has an effective range of around about 600 meters. While this won't be useful in most cases, it could be rather funny in close range fights against destroyers as a large explosion of the rocket can make an enemy vessel list very heavily. Lastly, the Isuzu also carries four torpedoes, but my oh my what have they done to these torpedoes. I spaded the Isuzu back when it was first introduced. Back then, the torpedoes it had were some of, if not the best, in the game. With a range of 38 km, top speed of 102 km an hour, and an explosive mass close to 1000 kilos of TNT, you can see why these torpedoes would be rather good. Nowadays, however, the torpedoes on the Isuzu carries have a range of 6 km, a top speed of 44 km an hour, and an explosive mass of a measly 100 kilos of TNT. The once lethal torpedoes the Isuzu carried are now paperweights that are more dangerous to your survival than that of the enemies. Mobility-wise, the Isuzu comes at the same speed as the Ikazuchi, 48 km an hour. Nothing much to say about it, it's pretty much the same as all preceding frigates, except for the Shonan, of course. This mobility should be adequate enough to work with, but keep in the back of your mind that you won't be the spearhead of your team. Survivability-wise, it is very similar to the other frigates, but at the same time, you can be more vulnerable since the Isuzu is a much bigger target than its peers. It being at 4.0 also has more chance at facing more potent enemies, so while the survivability isn't too different statistically, you might find yourself dying much faster than what you're used to. For playstyle, I suggest sticking to close quarters where your main armament can possibly outgun destroyers due to their volume of fire. The Isuzu can bring down a lot of hurt upon its targets, often even outgunning destroyers if they're within your effective range. You can be of great use as a supporting vessel to your teammates, but be careful you aren't caught alone, as at 4.0 you start more frequently seeing cruisers. Pros Good firepower as radar, cons, big target, bad torpedoes, verdict, consider it. The Isuzu is a solid vehicle but suffers the same fate as the other frigates as the current state of naval severely limits these vessels from reaching their full potential. The firepower, while low in caliber, is comparable to the infamous PR-159, but the Isuzu is worse than it due to the lower fire rate, underperforming explosive ordnance and larger size. This is reflected in their respective PRs. This was it for this video. I hope it could be of use to those who wanted to know more about the Japanese Navy in War Thunder. I cannot stress enough that most of these frigates aren't bad vessels, but the current state of naval just reduces their potential as fun vehicles so much that it happily swayed my verdicts.
the main perpetrator being the heavy BR compression. Every single one of these frigates can and will see cruisers in the battles, which they simply cannot reliably deal with. But moving the BR of these vessels down wouldn't help either, because then they would just curb some other coastal fleet vessels. A decent intermediate solution that would alleviate the problem of frigates without drastically addressing BR compression is to have a spawn point especially for them, somewhere in between PT boat and destroyer spawns. This would be a great help on the bigger maps and isn't even necessary on some of the smaller maps, but who am I to say what should or shouldn't be added. In the next video I'll be going over the beginning of the Japanese Blue Water Fleet, the destroyers. I'll probably delay this video as of recording this, the first dev block for the next update was released. I don't know what effect this new update will have on naval, but I'll do my best to release the next video soon after the release of the next update. Goodbye and may the seas be calm.